Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, live from Harlem in New York City, it's me, I'm Alex, and this is The Ramble. I am so sorry, Laurie Thompson. That's Laurie Thompson. Yeah. I, I'm so sorry because I, we did two of these the other day. And uh, they were wonderful, too. They were great. I'm going to try and recreate one of them here. <laughs> uh, but uh, I had, uh, I forgot, I have a new audio board here. And every time I reboot the computer, I have to reboot the audio board. Otherwise, the computer doesn't recognize the audio board. And we got, we got a beautiful picture of you talking. <laughs> but none of what you were talking about. Yeah, a beautiful picture of my tonsils when I opened my mouth too wide. So I ran <laughs> another rerun of you, which is, of course, not uh, not a bad thing. So, you know. But have you noticed I am so tired of appliances that have these idiosyncrasies? Like, you know, you're, you get your new board, you have to turn it on, turn it off, turn yeah. it off, turn it off again. And like things, I don't like appliances that scream at me. It's like, especially the microwave. I mean, I put the food in, I set the timer, yeah. and then I go and do something that takes about as much time as the timer I just set. And it, no matter, it just screams. May I argue against you? Yes. On this? Yes. I don't mind it because sometimes you do something for like five minutes. Uh -huh. You know, that's a long period of time. It is, so you go yeah. elsewhere in the house and you're doing other things uh, because you've got this thing cooking for five minutes. And yeah. then it goes off and you hear it and you go take care of it, you know. Yeah, well, that's good. But see, like, to me, if I forget about it and then I open the microwave 20 minutes later, um, I'm like, oh, look at yeah. this nice surprise, the heaping bowl of noodles that I can season however I want and yeah. put cheese on. You know, yeah. I forgot to do two things today. Number Good one, job. I forgot to turn on my lights. Oh, man. Okay. We're talking Calvin Klein model. And then the problem is my background. Now, I have, I. this is a phony background, folks. This is just a, a green screen back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you couldn't really open the window. If yeah. I... <laughs> but the trouble is that when I do this, you're, you're outside, right? I am. Things are wonderful outside, right? They feel they're, pretty great. They're, the only problem is that I'm not outside at night at, during the daytime. I'm outside at night. Okay. So, you so wait a minute. A Boom. There we go. Oh. <laughs> He's a meteorological <laughs> magic. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so now we're, now we're okay. We're oak. But no, you know what we were talking about the other day uh, that I wanted to kind of try and recreate was we were talking about our our lives, uh, kind of sexually. Yeah. You know our and, evolutions. It, yeah, and to some of us folks, mostly guys, actually. All we ever think about is sex. You know, we right. wake up in the morning, we go out for a walk, and every woman that passes by, we're, I do that, I wouldn't do that, I do that, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Do women do that, by the way? Uh, we do, but I don't think to the extent that you guys, that the fellows do. Because we're more interested, I think overall women are more interested in a variety of things happening at any one moment, whereas guys are a little more mono segment i mean you you focus on fewer things we're like the original multitaskers we got so many things going on at once yeah. we can't think about boning you you know i oh, know it's I, a big I blow yeah. so we have to remind you right oh and you do you're always willing to remind her her turkey <laughs> well you know it's almost like with if i meet a new woman okay yeah. I want to get the sex out of the way. 
Oh, really? Yeah, because once you get this, you know, uh, my argument was when you first meet somebody, you're not totally honest. You're you're playing a game of chess, you know. You're, you're, you're on your best person. You're on your best person. You're kind of being seductive. You're asking questions about yeah. sex. You know, you're 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 setting the setting the table, as it were. <laughs> okay. Now you go and you have sex. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now you're it's over with. You're both lying there on the pillow looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> and uh it the first words coming out of your mouth after that are the most honest words you will you are saying for the first time with this other person cuz you're not trying to get them in the sack. Yeah, and no, I think that differs from individual to individual. No, I think it I think it's guys. Okay, now I don't know about I'm women. I mean, okay. with, you, with women, do you go, thank God that's over? <laughs> uh, it depends. <laughs> it definitely varies from individual to individual. It's probably the um, one time a woman says to herself, why did I do this? <laughs> what was I thinking? Yeah. But see, I always had a lot of guy friends in uh, high, well, more in college. Yeah. A lot of guy friends. But to see the, and the, the stick is that a lot of the times, I think men interpret a woman's friendliness or warmth as a, she really digs me, when actually we're treating you like we treat, you know, our, our neighbor lady um, or, you know, the, the anybody. Um, yeah. we, we are just friendly people. And so some of the guys would want, would think that was my way of saying I wanted a, a more intimate relationship when I didn't at all, but I really treasured their friendship. Yeah, yeah. Well, See, I, I, I would always, I would always turn off the, uh, the 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 sex thing with anybody I was working with. That's a good idea. Me too. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's not to say that at work you aren't going to meet the love of your life. You know, right. I mean, because you're working, but it's not a, it's not necessarily a good place to do it because you're doing it for you. You you don't have a good perspective on it. Plus, you're a different person at work than you are in your reality, you know, in your real person. Yeah. Um, that we all have work personas, and then we have, you know, off work personas that are probably closer to our real being. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you just, comp you know, that once again, though, I had a situation where I was great, great friends with this guy I worked with. And yeah. uh, so we would pal around together all the time. And in my thinking, we were just really, really great friends. He thought it was more than that. And he started getting weird. Yeah. And so then, you know, it, then you have to be. And then he started doing some things that were just very stalker. And I did mornings. So he would call me in the middle of the night. And even though I could just hear the machine go off back in the machine days. Uh, and he would it would be all these insulting, horrible lines that he'd edited together from movies and music and everything. So I had to appreciate his creativity, mm -hmm. but it was just very insulting stuff. And it woke, the main thing is it woke me up yeah. and I had mornings and he knew that. So I had to go to the, I had him on tape, luckily. Yeah. Um, and so I had to go to the program director and, and say, I thought you'd like to know what your night man is doing in his off hours. And I just played the tape. Yeah. And, I said, I hate to do this, but I think you might need to talk to him. You know, I hate to... I well, hate to isn't that terrible when it's somebody you like, that you have a friendship relationship with, and all of a sudden, the nature of it changes like that? Yeah. You know? And what you've done, you, you mourn it because you've lost a good friend. Exactly. Exactly. You now, know. we were kind of able to patch it back together... He apologized profusely for all of it, and he had a lot of issues. He was brilliantly talented, a lot of issues. And so that, that's I, I, what... I'll tell you, I found that I made good friends with women after we got sex out of the way. And then I realized that that wasn't going to be the nature of our relationship. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
that, that yeah, the sex was fine and everything, but it wasn't going to be the nature of our relationship. It wasn't going to define our relationship. And we became really good, close friends and remained that way forever. Yeah, you know. well, that, that, me now, that wouldn't have worked for me. Because to me, when, you, when it goes into sex, uh, I don't, I get a little uptight after I've had sex with a person. Because then you get uptight? I get, yeah, because then I always think, okay, what if I'm not in the mood? And you start to respond to their cues. I'm always tempted because I'm a people pleaser to respond to the cues if they wanted to have sex again. And what if I didn't? What if I wanted to keep it that friendship? I, you know, like yeah. I would feel like, oh, okay, well, I have to, I don't know what I'm going to do. And it messed things up for me. Yeah. I wouldn't sleep with someone until I knew they were probably going to be at least a dating relationship. Well, you know, when you finally have sex with somebody, they're, they've gone from being a friend, because hopefully you're going to be friends when you meet, you enjoy being with each other. So now right. you find yourself in the sack and you have sex. <laughs> Once you have sex, that relationship is no longer a friendship. No. It's an involvement. And involvements are just more involved. <laughs> and I mean, name. now you're, you were very, you were brought up a religious kid. Oh, yeah. So I mean, I'm the, sure every now and then you worry about whether you're going to hell or not. Not over that. <laughs> no, not over that. A lot of different things. <laughs> well, no, I always felt, you know, I never, I wasn't a religious person, but I felt if there was a God, he invented this little pleasure. Right. You know? Exactly. And it wasn't, uh, I, what I love, the pill came out and changed yes. the whole nature of the rules of the game. Yes, which I think that was fundamental. Yeah, Where cause... women could, like, go, you know, hit the sack and just test out the wares. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Out of pure curiosity and enthusiasm and enjoyment. And before the pill, you had to be very careful because the result, if, if it went wrong, was pregnancy. Yeah. And you didn't and want to have to deal with that. And that's why women are more protective of themselves. Why, it's, why guys are going, come on, come on, let's go to bed, let's go to bed, <laughs> let's go to bed. And women are going, hmm. He's like, we I have 15 know. minutes. That's it, the guy. Yeah, yeah is he, if I get pregnant, is he the guy I want to have a, have to deal with for the rest of my life because we have this common thing? Yeah. Do we? Do I want to create an, another, another individual with this man? Yeah. And the answer was usually, I don't know. Well, the reason and, I've never had any kids is not because I couldn't. I know I either. could because I've gotten yeah. several women pregnant and they just... It had miscarriages. We didn't do the abortion <laughs> route. The sperminator. They, they had miscarriages. So I know that I could get a woman pregnant. That, that, but I got a woman pregnant when I was 19. Yeah, she was the first heavy. woman I ever had sex with. Okay. Whoa. God, will that put you off? You know. Well, and what kept you coming back to the trough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that will really put you off. And, uh, so after that, I was very careful about any woman I had sex with. Every woman I ever had sex with, I would ask them, are you using any kind of protection? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if they weren't, I did. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I always asked because I didn't want to have a child by anybody I didn't want to have a child by or that I didn't trust would be a good mother. Yeah, see, and that always went through my mind. You no, know, because I knew I wasn't going to have children, but I don't even like the, the, li the likes of conception with someone I don't admire and appreciate. Well, also, if you have a kid, you even if this person is a one-night stand, you're forever linked to this person for at least 18 years of that child's life. Yeah, that's why I don't. I didn't have one night stand because of that very reality. Yeah, and, and even beyond that, I mean, he's still always that child's dad. Yes, yes, and so there are just way too many variables I wasn't willing to deal with to be promiscuous. Yeah, and so yeah, and I see, see I was blessed enough, or my you know my ilk was blessed enough that when I got to San Francisco, AIDS had already AIDS was happening. So all the guys wore condoms. You didn't even have to 
make it an issue. Well, the trouble, the trouble with San Francisco, I mean, I always felt and knew that it was basically a gay problem. It was not a heterosexual problem. The, the, and the, the, I always argued the reason was the nature of the kind of sex you have. Exactly. Where with anal sex, there is a breaking of blood vessels. Yep. Sperm is a blood product. So therefore, they can co-mingle and you get AIDS. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I don't like having anal sex. Not my cup of tea. Because uh, I guess the main term I use when having anal sex, or if I had anal sex, I've never had it, is ow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, ow. so because I wasn't, because I was doing vaginal sex in which there was no exchange of blood product. Right. I, the chances of me getting AIDS was the the thing that argue, I argued with the gay community was they were going around going, well, you know, you can get AIDS just like we can get AIDS. N not really. I don't buy that. Okay. <laughs> I understand why you're saying it because you want to scare heterosexuals into helping you out. And I, I, I understand yeah. that. But, you know, don't <laughs> tell lies because lies are what got us here in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the gays in San Francisco had, had, and I hate to say this, nobody to blame but themselves, because here's what happened. You had a head of the, uh, 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 what, what, what's the... Uh, Glad? It, no, the, no a, a doctor who was in charge of, his name was Silverman, I think. Mm -hmm. And he was the head of the, uh, of, the, of, of the health department. And he came out and said... This age is probably coming from those bathhouses. And, and they were still in operation when I got to San Francisco. There were tons of them, and there were guys who would come out and say, well, I had sex with 10 guys today. And that was you common. Know. Uh, and by the way, you take, you take a bunch of women, and you have let them have sex anytime they want to. Yeah. And they're very picky about it. <laughs> yeah. When you get guys having sex with guys, well, forget it. You know, it's a free-for-all. Yeah. But anyway, what happened was you had these newspapers in San Francisco, or these gay newspapers. And the who were the main advertisers to the gay newspapers? These bathhouses. Mm -hmm. And they kept attacking Silverman for what he was saying. Uh, they tried to get him out of I think they put, finally pushed him out of office. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, gay. Yeah, and he said the first thing we got to do is close down those bathhouses. And he was correct. He was absolutely correct. But so, the, so in a lot of way, the gays created the problem. I mean, once the problem hit, rather than solve it, they were in a state of denial. Well, I think once you have a community, the gay community in this case, that's been persecuted. For so long, yeah. they have a they have an antenna, you know, kind of like a woo, uh, when something seems to hint at gay uh, prejudice or bias. Yeah, yeah. So close to the bathhouse. Yeah. So I mean, it 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 uh, it was a it was a thorny situation, <laughs> uh, and um, one in which I felt the the gay community was not helping the situation rather than admit they had a real problem there. Yeah, there was so much misinformation. And the, the thing that was most powerful uh, about what a threat it was to me as a uh, heterosexual. Well, and we went, we went through this, by the way, folks, because AIDS hit San Francisco while we were working there. Exactly. Yeah, because when I moved to San Francisco, I had to store my furniture for a month. And so our engineer, who happened to be gay, a bear, um, hooked me up with a, two friends of his. And unbeknownst to me, they were a couple. But um, <laughs> they, they, um, they helped me move. My, we took their pickup truck and made like four trips out to near SFO to get this furniture. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then uh, so I got to know him and we had such a fun day. You know, we just laughed and had a blast of a day and really felt a, a a kinship or a friendship yeah, with yeah, each other yeah. and then so but we weren't you know we didn't stay in each other's lives we just had a real good time that one day so then i asked the engineer 
oh, and I remember what they said. I said, what are you guys doing for the rest of the day? So we're going to the baths. We've got some really good weed. And we're going, and to, the going baths. to the baths. And they were going to stay there for the rest of the day. So this is four o'clock. And so less than a year later, more like eight or nine months later, I asked the engineer who had set me up with these guys, um, how is, I think his name was David. And he said, you haven't heard? No. And I said, no. And he said, he died of AIDS a month ago. And it was just like, they just moved my furniture eight months ago. How, you know, what, what do you mean he died? And that's, what was, that's when I realized that age was infiltrating our community and stealing our loved ones. And that, became, that was so Well, that, that, the stealing of loved ones was, was horrible enough for you and I. Yeah. Uh, who were not uh, involved in that kind of behavior. This okay. is true. I wouldn't even know if I had to go to the baths where they were exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but we did have friends. Mm -hmm. who, who got AIDS and died. Yeah. Uh, Jim Samuels. Remember the comedian Jim Samuels? Mm -hmm. yeah. Gay. In the closet because he was doing comedy and he didn't know whether he yeah. should come out or not. It, it could In be fact, he won the comedy competition one year. Did he? Yeah. And a nice guy. Really nice guy. Uh, and uh, he... Um, he died of AIDS. There were quite a few other people we knew that died of AIDS. And what you did is, as somebody who really wasn't in that core group, is when somebody died of AIDS, you lost a friend or yeah. you lost somebody you knew. Yeah. And and they were going like crazy. They were going so, it was going so bad in San Francisco that I think the average person in San Francisco knew at least one person. Who had AIDS or was dying oh yeah of. yeah and uh, I think the Sentinel or the Bar one of the newspapers published obituaries and at the beginning of people who died of AIDS yeah and at the beginning there were three you know three a week and and it came to the point where they just couldn't they would list them all but they couldn't even print all the obituaries isn't it amazing that today people don't die of AIDS right I mean you know. All we had to do was find the cure for it, or the, or at least not the cure. It, it, you take the medicine, and it just simply stops you from getting the negative. Stops you from dying. It yeah. stops you from dying. <laughs> uh, we had a good friend who got AIDS, uh, Warren Thomas. Guy was on I our know, show. I remember when he, he fell sick, and he was at San Francisco General because a lot of the comedians did. He that had health. phlebitis, which is a blood thing, and he needed a blood transfusion. And mm -hmm. that was at the time that they weren't testing the blood for AIDS because they didn't know about it. And he yeah. came down with AIDS. Right. I remember Christy, the producer at the time, and we would take him pizzas. And uh, well, there was a great burger place not far from General and taking those things. And he was such a virile guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, and it had, he had, but he it had, it had, and he was very sexual, but it had nothing. To do, it had and nothing to do with sex. Him. Nothing yeah, to do with sex. Have, pardon? Huh? He, he, yeah, I think that he might have mingled in both camps. I don't think so. I don't think regularly, but I think he may. I mean, you just don't know what people do. But yeah. anyway, that was but, not his persona. And then. The cocktail came out just in time, and he started taking it. He went from one T cell uh -huh. to like a hundred, and he yeah. was on his way to getting better. And he got better and better and better. He moved to New York. I got to know him here. Yeah. All of a sudden, he kind of disappeared, and I hadn't heard from him in a while. And uh, one day, they found went up to his apartment here in New York, and he was dead. Now, we don't know what, I don't, I never was able to find out what he died of. But it wasn't AIDS, I don't think. Yeah, it was, uh, I know a lot of people, um, you know, would some succumb to suicide. Because they felt they already were on suicide watch. You know, with Well, AIDS, this wasn't a suicide. This wasn't a suicide. No. Oh, no, I wasn't implying that about Warren. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, they, in fact, they call it a cocktail divorce. When two people are together, and because one has AIDS, you think you're going to be together, to, you know, for life. And then all of a sudden, the person with AIDS takes the cocktail. All of a sudden, 
they're not a couple anymore. It's called a cocktail divorce. I never heard of that. Yeah. I never heard of that. I think I armisted Maupin. Yeah, that's I got it that, off him. That's amazing. Well, <laughs> I think we did this one with audio okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, the little Before meters you. going and everything. You know, I'm making <laughs> sure it's working. And why don't we get together again next week, okay? Superb. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the well-known, well-loved Lori Thompson. Bye, Lori. Bye. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Lori Thompson. Yes. Uh, hey, listen, we got some problems tonight. And if you're trying to listen to us just audio only off our audio feed, uh, it's it's not working tonight. For some reason, it is on and off again. And I've been checking it and trying to get it to work. And I, you know, I'm getting it to work. It's, uh, it's just, it just said to me an error again. See? Okay. So there's some problem with them because it's uh, happening on a lot of my machines here. So, uh, you know, what's interesting is we do this live uh, uh, thing uh, that goes out over the uh, audio, you know, goes out as an audio program. I can't even think straight anymore. As an audio program, and it goes out uh, uh, over, uh, where, where do you go for that? I forget now. Uh, hmm. Well, anyway, you go online to it, and uh, there's a link to it, I think, on our, uh, on our page here, and so on. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is if you're trying to get us using the audio-only format, uh, you're not going to be able to get us tonight, okay? Or you're, we're having trouble with it. And, in fact, let me just uh, turn this thing off so that I don't have to, I don't have to worry about it. So anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's what that is all about. I'm sorry that you, uh, that you may, if you, if you like to listen to the audio only, uh, just come over and watch the video. Uh, I don't, I don't know why we do the audio thing anymore, actually, to be very honest with you, but, uh, you know, we do it and, uh, it, uh, it doesn't exactly like to work uh, at this time. There's a problem with it. Oh boy, I'm I'm kind of flaky today. I you know what it is? I went out, I did my PT today, my uh, physical therapy, and uh, you know it. I I kind of enjoy it. You know, it's it it's a pain in the ass, but I enjoy it because I feel better afterwards. But I feel sometimes I feel really loopy afterwards. So excuse me if I don't am not able to make a coherent. Uh, what do they call them? Oh, a sentence. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Hmm. We got a lot of people here waiting to come on, so let's let's do it, right? Okay. Well, here they come. Uh bring up our Zoom panel. And uh let's see here. There they go. Uh there's uh Alan and uh who's over in the corner here? Uh Kevin Stopper's phone. Oh, I see. Yeah, Kevin's doing uh Doing his, uh, what 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 do you drive? You drive for Uber? Well, DoorDash and Uber, but I'm on my way home now. I'll be home in a second. DoorDash and Uber. So if you live in his area, just uh, order some food and get to meet him personally. Very good at at, uh, at Christmas time. He can come out to your house, make a delivery of Chinese food or whatever he's delivering, and he can play Santa for the kids. Right? There you go. Right? For an extra 150 bucks. For an extra 150 <laughs> bucks. <laughs> right, exactly. Hello to Alan. How are you, Alan? I'm doing good, Alex. How are you doing? No falls or anything since I saw you last? No, no falls since you saw me last. And today good. I went to my PT, and when I went, I brought the cane, but I didn't use it, hmm. which I felt pretty good about. So. Good. Yeah, you know. But that was going to PT, coming back. <laughs> you know, I mean, I get so weak from all you of that. You were a little sore. Yeah. Anyway, I keep getting this error sign from, uh, um, let me see if I can, let me see if there's any audio going on out there. It's trying to, oh, yes, now we're, now we're on the air. Now we're working. See, 
Uh, there's something good. You know what happens? What's great about it, I use a thing uh, called Vozcast, and I've been using them for God, maybe well, 10 years or something, when, however long we've been doing this, all right? Mm -hmm. When the first thing I did was actually send out audio. And uh, I've been using them, and they've never gone down on me. Mm. Kind of like women I've known, never gone down on me. <laughs> and um, uh, tonight they did. And, uh, you know, so I, I'll give them that. But, you know, but it's, it's, um, it seems to be working now, so... Uh, we'll, uh, we'll try and suffer here. Phil Hello. You had California visitors. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Phil Meyer came over on Monday to hang wow. out here. And, uh, Marjorie had to admit, you know, I got to tell you, if you don't talk to him about politics, he's a really nice guy. Absolutely. I don't understand well, how... We get a, along great. I don't understand how a guy can be that nice and have those politics. That I don't understand. I don't get nice either. does not equate the kind of evil qualities that Donald Trump possesses. But anyway. Hey, look who's here. Tom Yamaguchi. Hi, Tom. Hello. Oh, I'm not even muted. Great. You're not even <laughs> muted. You're fine. And then, of course, okay. there is the fabulous Charlie Wallace, who is here. What is What does your shirt say? It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. Oh, I see. I've yeah, seen that one before. Yeah, but, he's worn that one before. Yeah, but well, I don't know that kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> what? What? You if, don't know imaginary numbers. I huh? don't know imaginary numbers. I yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, Charlie, you're you know you're the rocket scientist. Are those numbers really practical? Yes, the math doesn't work out without them. I mean, one plus <laughs> one seems solid to me you know two minus one seems solid to me but squiggly mark minus four equals two <laughs> eh, i just don't you know i don't get it anyway and of yeah. course the lovely and attractive josh wheeler is with us as he is every every other week on a monday because on a wednesday because he's uh He's he's not working tonight, right? That's correct. That's correct. And you're not working tomorrow night either, right? Uh, no. No. Oh. Right. But no, you're no. working on Friday. I am. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, listen, well, you know, every every uh, four years when we do our little stupid election thing, uh, our imaginary election, um, <laughs> we are foisted upon us is a thing they call the October Surprise. Yep. Is what happened today the October Surprise? Probably not. You don't think well, so? The war yeah. against Iran is the October Surprise. By the time Election Day gets here, we're going to be in, in a full-out war with Iran. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, um, uh, and who benefits from that? Which candidate? Uh, Trump. You think? Whoever's in power loses. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately. You think so? Yeah. I don't consider him a friend of Israel's. Well, he's not, but yeah. like I said, he's not in power now. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, but, but the October surprise, I thought, happened today with this uh, revelation by the, uh, you know, by what's his name, by Smith. Of all the things he is uh, asking of the Supreme Court, it was like a, a, a what? Oh, he, I hadn't heard that. Well, you haven't heard it? No. Oh my oh. God! Oh, right. Somebody yeah. want to tell him what it's about? Uh, uh, you've been paying attention to it, haven't you, Josh? Well, I haven't read it. I've heard, you know, that the brief that he submitted to the judge was made public today. Um, by the judge, there's. A lot of accusations from the Trump people saying, you know, the Biden and Harris administration had it uh, put out to sabotage the election and all that, which they didn't. Um, it was turned in by the special counsel like a week ago, and the judge reviewed it and decided that it was should be public record. So he's the he or she. I don't remember the judge is the one who released she. it. She. Um, but, I, you know, I didn't. Uh, so, I haven't read it yet because I haven't had time. Yeah. But. I heard that it's the same basic timeline and just includes more details. 
you know, such as uh, uh, evidence, quotes, and emails, texts, things like that, that, you know, show his utter disregard for the consequences of what he was doing and that he was aware of it and things like uh, warnings. You know, when he was warned about Mike Pence being in danger, he said things like, so what? And, you know, you know quotes like that. Yeah. And it also it also dealt with him actually conspiring <laughs> to try and throw the election. And uh, discussions between he and Pence and his legal team and all these people who have, uh, I guess, kind of ratted on him and said yeah. that, yeah, well, because they didn't want to be accused of being part of the conspiracy. Right. Uh, and um, it, it really, it, it, it nailed him. It just nailed him today. Well, I don't know, Alex. You know, it's, it's the October surprise, but then there, there was the September surprise, the August surprise, the July surprise, the June surprise. Well, what I said and, was, and you his, heard me his, when his, I when I let his fans, his fans still stick with him. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's thirty five percent of the vote. Yeah. Okay. That's true. So the fact is, what happens to those people who've been sticking by him staunchly, who are not part of that thirty five percent? And and every now and then scratch their heads and go, you know what? What the hell is he? What the hell did he just say? You know, mm -hmm. those people. And it isn't really a matter of that those people aren't going to vote for Trump. It's a matter that those people just aren't going to vote. Well, <laughs> possible, and, yeah. huh? That's possible, yeah. I mean, do you agree with that, uh, Josh? That there's a good chance that that's that's what happens to Trump. It's not that he, you know, that she gains votes, but that he loses some because people just don't get out and vote. Yeah, that's very possible. I don't know if it'll be that way, but you know, we talked in the past that you know a vote not for Trump in any form is good for Harris. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I mean. I know what uh, you know. Tom is saying, though. I mean, and I agree. It doesn't change. You know, I mean, there could have been a video released today of him saying, "I we need to steal the election," and blah blah. You know, I mean, just flat out. Ooh, there's it, audio. <laughs> couldn't change. You know, their minds or whatever. So yeah. you know, but I do think that independent-minded people, you know, will see that as wrong and i think that uh, when you combine it with the harris walls campaign idea that we're not going back to that chaos mm -hmm. um that'll chip will keep continue to chip away yeah for another month yeah so i mean uh, it, it was not a good thing for the trump people of course you know he's yeah. he's calling them all liars and I, uh, his latest thing is if he doesn't like you he calls you stupid right yeah well yeah uh, that's well, when you're the smartest person in the world, what do you expect? Everybody else is stupid. That's right. He considers himself the smartest person in the world. Or mentally impaired. <laughs> yeah. Mentally impaired. Well yeah. said, Tom. Yeah, but, but it is kind of interesting, you have to admit, the whole notion of what's been happening here, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's making stuff up at this point. They're all making stuff up. Yep. I mean, yeah. they tried to not. They tried not to leave power. I mean, it's it's blatantly obvious. So Vance can go on TV last night and say uh, we're focused on the future, and we did peacefully transfer <laughs> power on the yeah. twentieth. No, actually, you didn't. I mean, you know, just because I arrived at my destination safely doesn't mean I couldn't have done a lot of damage on the way there if I ran into every park. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean that's like saying, "Well, I'm I got here safely. Let's not talk about the journey." That's 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 crap. Well, what he was trying to say was when election day, when it, when inauguration day came, we yeah, had right. the inauguration. Yeah, that yeah. we handed over power peacefully. Uh, you know, uh, omit the fact that the Capitol was surrounded in a circle of, you know, stormtroopers. Oh, and that the process, that the process of this country counting up votes was impaired. Yeah. You know, I mean, that certainly is a major thing. Uh, speaking of, of last night, how did you feel about that debate? Good. 
Hmm? Good. I wish more de more of the presidential debates would be like that. They weren't yelling at each other. I mean, Vance was telling lies and stuff one after the other, but they they were cordial with each other and everything. Boy, Trump should learn from this guy on how to debate. Well, no, I don't know that that's the way to debate. After all, this isn't a debate for all the marbles, you know. Uh, I saw a, a, a gr really great uh, um, story about a, a woman who had two sons. She sent one off to sea and one off to be vice president of the United States. She's never, she, all she's heard from is the guy who went to sea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And the other one has never been heard from since. Um, the vice presidency is a thankless job in most cases. In in uh, Kamala's, but I love I love how Trump and Vance constantly are saying, "You opened the border. You did this. You did that." And she's just the vice president. Yeah, she I'm, I'm the, tired. She why, doesn't make those decisions. Why doesn't so, does. why doesn't somebody shut some of these people up when they talk about the in the in the um, uh, Harris administration, mm. boy, am I, I got news for you. She was vice president. She didn't really have any say so in anything. That's right. He made all the decisions. He signed the executive's orders. She couldn't sign executive orders. So to blame her for anything that Biden did is is ridiculous. But nobody wants to take people to task for that because they don't, don't want to throw Biden by the wayside. So they just allow that myth to exist that it was the, it was the Harris administration, you know. And I'm sorry, it wasn't. She had no control over anything. Yep. I mean, the, the, and that's the job of the vice president. You're really standing by in case he drops dead. You know, that's basically what it is. Um. And and uh, I you know it, but it's a it's a thankless job in most cases, and uh, you know if if she wins and Walls becomes vice president and then she runs again and wins again and he serves vice president for two terms, maybe he might think about running for president, but most times that doesn't work out, you know, and yeah. uh, they'll forget you know and so. Yeah. The trivia question ten years from now will be who was the, who was the vice president under Harris, you know. So I mean, it's it's just not a it's a thankless job. Yep. The only time it's handy is if he gets sick or incapacitated for some reason or dies in office. Yeah, yeah, and that's 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 when the, yeah. the you know. Or if there's a tie in the Senate. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, yeah. 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 That's it. You know. That's it. Otherwise, you can go on vacation. <laughs> you know? um, but what did you think of the debate last night? Uh, uh, Josh, did you watch it? No, I had to work, so I didn't get to watch it. I've only seen, you know, various uh, highlights, and yeah. I listened to some of the uh, reaction or commentary, if you will, on my way home this morning on my drive home from work. Yeah. So I heard a you know, a bit about it before mm -hmm. I went to sleep. Uh, mm -hmm. The action seemed fairly positive all the way around. Uh, you know, I, my understanding is it was fairly calm, fairly cordial. It was, it was also uh, really boring. Policy, <laughs> right. You know, it was boring, and there are a lot of people th that are not, I don't want to say they're upset. Uh, they're a little surprised or disappointed that Walls was not more offensive and calling out a Vance, but... At the same time, they're not too worried because why a lot of people can credit Vance for, you know, sounding great and talking slick and trying to sell their fascist agenda but making it not sound like it's one as, you know, a winning night for him. Uh, polls so far have indicated that people who watched it just found Walls more favorable, more believable, and uh, approved of him higher than they do advance. They well, I mean, but he was a guy who didn't look like he really wanted to debate anybody. You know, yeah, he not. supposedly told the the uh, 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 Harris people that he, he debating was not one of his long suits, you know, and he was really kind of. 
right. afraid of, of the whole process. Yeah. You know. He's debated for when he ran for governor. Not like this, but it's on a smaller level. You yeah. Know? And yeah, I mean, yeah, you could tell he was sort of uncomfortable at the beginning, but he really did relax and warm up. And uh, yes. actually, I didn't find it boring at all. I found I, it really interesting. I did. I uh, agree with Tom. Yeah, I um, I think that that uh, Vance, one of, one of the things that he was trying to do was make him look normal, make himself look normal, and also try to make Trump look normal which he failed miserably. Yep. And it, it's interesting because what really tripped him up was all that work that he did to try to normalize himself just fell apart when he couldn't answer the question if, you know, if, if Biden uh, won the election. And because he, you know, the, the, the famous uh, damning uh, non-answer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so as a consequence, that's all the media talked about today was that one part of the debate and everything else. So in a way, yes, Walsh definitely okay. did. Let me ask, let me ask you this question. What the hell could he do? He's made a pact with the devil, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he's got to go along with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And he, 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 in his heart of hearts, he may be sitting there going, really, I don't want to say this. But this is what I got to do because I've been given my marching orders and I'm a good soldier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm. I, I mean, I don't, you know something? I don't know whether I like the J.D. Vance who thought Trump was another Hitler or whether I like or whether I'm supposed to like this Vance, you know? I mean, I, I like Vance proper. back when he was that way because he was being honest. He was going against the flow, really. How he became a vice presidential nominee for Trump, I have no idea. Because, I mean, certainly he didn't, or so far as we know, didn't kiss up to Trump that much. No, know? but uh, the, donor, donor, the donors wanted him. The donuts? Donors. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Thiel especially Ooh. Wanted him and demanded that Trump pick. Well, him. Peter Thiel is this Silicon Valley billionaire. Yeah. yeah. Who I guess handpicked him. What did he do? How did he? How did he hook up well, with he Thiel? Wanted, Thiel. He wanted the Senate seat for him in Ohio. Yeah. Well, I believe he worked for him when he yeah. was pretending not to be an elitist from San Francisco there for a couple of years. Yeah. 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 yeah it's amazing how the the party that is decried. East Coast liberals and Ivy League people and all that uh, now features two candidates that went to the Wharton School of Business in Harvard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I like, the other, I, uh, uh, in, you know, has people who went to public school. <laughs> I like Vance's answer to the same kind of the same way Trump answered it, mm -hmm. a little more gentle on health care, what he's what Trump has got planned for. It, getting rid of the Affordable Care Act, boy, did he screw that up. You know, oh, we we came in, and when Trump was in office, we were working on making the Affordable Care Act better, and no, 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 no. John McCain came in, raised his hand, and went, yeah. on his, almost on his deathbed, and stopped mm -hmm. Trump from all this crap. Yep, yep, you know. You know? Thank uh, you, John McCain. Thank you, yeah. No, I mean, John McCain, in the end, was a hero, yep. you know? Yep. Well, he was a hero, too, even though Trump didn't think so during Vietnam, so. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, sometimes I I wonder what who heroes are exactly. I don't, I don't necessarily buy war heroes, uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, there was a war hero during World War II named Audie Murphy, he was yep. the most decorated man in World War II. Mm -hmm. And all he had to do was kill people. Yep. And I don't know if we honor that in that way. You know, hey, you went out and killed more people than other people. Well, uh, he killed them to save lives of his fellow soldiers, though. Actually, right. at one time, Audie Murphy said, to be very honest with you, the reason why I uh, I uh, had all these, uh, got all these awards and everything, and I was the most decorated person in World War II, 
was because I was a blatant coward and I didn't want to get killed and I just kept shooting at people. Mm -hmm. I mean, he even admitted to it, saying, don't don't look at me as a hero, you know? Uh, well, John McCain was shot out of the sky uh -huh. trying to do his job. He was captured. He was tortured. Even you know, to the day that he died, he could never lift one of his two arms all the way yeah, up from the shoulder. Yeah, he from the damage they he did. Couldn't. He yeah. continued to serve the public all through his life. You know. Yeah. No. I mean, I think that in in the end, I mean, I I didn't know what to think of John McCain to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, uh, but in the end, I think he proved to be. I think the day I figured he was a pretty good guy was the day that he was. He was running for president, and this woman came up oh, yeah. to him about Obama. No, it was actually at it was actually at a rally. Yeah, and it was on video. This woman, you know, yeah. says, "I, I, I, I can't, I can't vote for, a, I can't, I don't like Obama because he's an Arab." Yeah, well, no, I don't think said, it, no, he, he's a good man. You know, he's a good man. We disagree on politics, but he's a good man. Yeah. yeah. And that little, I, I don't know if that was exactly what she said to him, but he did defend Obama said. and he did say, hey, you know, we disagree with each other politically, but I don't disagree with him as another person. And I think he, yeah. you know, he's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good guy and he, he's a good family man. I think that was brought up. Yeah, I think so. And, and I, at that point, I said, guy's okay. You know, I won't mm -hmm. vote for him, but the guy's okay. I actually did vote for him uh, in, was it uh, 2000, mm -hmm. when the first time he was running for president. I, I, I didn't like George W. Bush, and uh, so I registered Republican to vote for John McCain. Because one thing, you know, McCain, one of the few Republicans that actually accepted climate science. Yeah. So I, I, I supported him then. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he in the end turned out to me to be a really stand-up guy, you know. And as I say, you know, I, I could conceive of myself if I had a Democrat who sucked, uh, I, I could conceive of myself voting for John McCain and not feeling particularly guilty about it, you know. Which reminds me, I got my, uh, I got my uh, uh, mail-in ballots. Oh, boy. Hmm. I should be getting mine next week. Yeah, Me too. Yeah. Yeah. In California the early next week. I think in California they mail them out this week and we get them next week, right, Tom? So I, I, I think it's early next week. But they'll, they'll that we'll get them they'll, they'll mail I them heard out. something like that. Yeah. Well we, we got I guess got, that depends on the county you're in. Got mine today. I in the same I, county. Yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna do about voting for Senate. Because I do not like Gillibrand. Uh, I I absolutely th th vomit thinking about her. You know, I mean, what she did to uh, Al Franken was horrible. It was just yeah. horrible. It was a case of uh, the, you know, eating your own. You know, and I just I just felt it was terrible. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, I felt it was terrible that he quit. He should have stuck, you know, he should have held on to his... Yep, uh, he definitely should have. Yeah, and I think he he has even admitted that he may have made a mistake by doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But he was, you know, he was a good uh, a good uh, um, senator. Uh, he became a really good left-wing, yep. voice of left-wing left, left -wing politics. And uh, I... Um, but what she did to him, just, I found abhorrent. And so mm. I, how can I vote for her? I can't bring myself to So I don't know what I do. Who who else is yeah. running, you know? Yeah, well, they um, usually have others. But uh, it doesn't sound like she's really um, threatened with uh, with any really serious opposition. Is that true? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know who she's running against. Yeah, we see. So, But I don't know who to probably, vote for. She's probably in a safe seat, because otherwise I'd be getting... Tons of emails, yeah. <laughs> like I'm getting for John Tester and Sharon yeah, Brown yeah. and Jackie Rosen and 
you I mean, know. I've seen some ads on it on TV for her, but I think they're basically aimed at talking to people who live upstate and so on. Because yeah. they all kind of, I guess they'll vote for her down here. But I don't know who to vote for, and I don't know who's there. But I always found in the old days, when I went and I, I voted, and I didn't like the person who was the Democrat, I would then vote for what I called the second best liberal, the communist. Okay. <laughs> but I don't think the communists are on the ballot anymore. So, so. Yeah. It could be. Could be. Yes. Uh, yeah, they'll come back to bite me in the ass. Did you vote communist back in blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We know uh, Robert uh, or RFK Jr. is going to be on our ballot uh, for president. He did get removed, removed from the California ballot. Uh, uh, guess what party he's running in? It was, wasn't it the uh, Progressive Party or something? No, no. He's Re running what, the, the really, American the really, Independent the, Party. Oh, really? I, maybe the, the party that was started by George Wallace. That's oh, right. right. That. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Can you, his, 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 his father must be rolling over in his grave. I thought it was right maybe now. the very, si that, very, that, the very silly funny. party, you know. Yeah. I know. I mean, you know, a racist party. You know. <laughs> well, listen. His father worked for uh, 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 who do you call it, uh, Eugene McCarthy. So oh. you know, I don't know how he could argue to him not to go on that. Well, day. but when he became Attorney General, he was pretty much at odds with with George Wallace. He yeah. may have been at odds with George Wallace, but he still yeah. worked with McCarthy. I never liked Robert Kennedy. I okay. figured Robert Kennedy was the biggest phony ass ever. Okay. Well, I was a McCarthy. I was a Gene McCarthy. Uh, mm -hmm. well, I was for I for, was for you, Gene McCarthy. Too. I was too young. I was too young to vote, even though I was eighteen in '68. Yeah, I was for. But I for, turned twenty-one is when they lowered the voting age to eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, same thing here. <laughs> yeah, because you were born the same year. 1950. Was that the yep. same year they lowered the age of consent to 14? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I mean it. It. Uh, um, I, but so I don't know what to do. You know, I mean, I've got. I've, I. I. I don't know who else is on there. I haven't opened up the ballot yet, so I'll have to look at it and see who's. Who. It doesn't matter if I who I'm voting for, as long as I don't vote for her. That's how I feel about it. You know. All right. Yeah. All right. And I, blank. Huh? Don't, don't you give a? Uh, for that one. You don't. You don't give a. Uh, you don't vote for that part. I think you can leave it blank, can't you? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't there a time when you couldn't leave it blank? You had to, f you know? No, no, you don't have to. You, know, you can leave it blank. And, you know what I always wanted in, in just elections is just one other little check mark that says none of the above. <laughs> you know, we had that's a what ballot. Leaving it blank is. Yeah. We had a ballot proposition. I actually signed, signed to get help to get it on the ballot, of putting not none of the above as an option on the ballot. Unfortunately, it failed. Why? Why would you but think it would fail? I don't know, but I think it's a great option. None of the above. I mean, of course, actually, an even better option is having right choice voting. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, that's what but, I that's but, what I support is right choice voting. But wait a minute, when they put people on the ballot there. Um, did they uh, uh, when they put that? Did they put it on the ballot? I mean, did people actually vote yeah, for that? Yeah, yeah, we had a proposition that, that would it had our elections that included that as an option. But the, yeah, the ballot. The only problem failed. was that none of the above won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the no votes definitely won. The no votes mm -hmm. won. Wow. The no votes definitely. Yeah, won. I just always wanted to have that option. You know, just yeah. to be able to say, hey, I don't like any of these guys. And quite frankly, if neither of the guys got like 50 percent or something, then it should be an, another runoff or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, um, how do you think it's all looking, uh, uh, Josh? I mean, do uh, you think uh, our uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Oh boy, Kamala uh, has a good shot at it now. 
I think so. I mean, it's still moving, still moving their way slowly. Yeah. But, you know, foresee any positive press or things to develop for Trump that would sway independent people. Uh, I mean, that's the advantage that I see that she has is she is new enough and unwell known enough that she can continually say or do things that might actually change people's minds. But I don't really see what Trump could do in that department. You know, he's been around for so long and. Uh, despite the fact that he likes to act like he's the outsider, he's been to Washington already and he has a record, you know, that he's proud of, which is fine, but he still has his record and not everybody is proud of it. And he has his record of making trouble and creating drama every day. Mm -hmm. And people know that. And, you know, so his unfavorabilities are really high and I just don't see where he has an opportunity to drive those down. The same thing with Vance. You know, but Harris and Walls are already leading in those areas, which is very positive for them. But I also see where as we get closer to the election and more people listen to them or hear about them, that they have the opportunity for that. So when polls are close and candidates need a little bit to break their way, I just see her as set up in a much better position to see that happen mm -hmm. than Trump would be. You know, like, I just don't know whose minds Trump is changing as we sit here in October of 2024. You know, I mean, I mean, if you're for it, Trump, you're for Trump. You've been for Trump since 2016. You know, the whole thing. I just don't know who didn't vote for him the first two times, for example, that's sitting here now, October the 2nd, 2024, and he can say something tomorrow. And those people will be like, well, OK, you know, I'm going to vote for Trump now. I mean, I'm sure, you know, this is a country of 300 million people. You know, I'm sure there's a person somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't need a person somewhere. He needs a couple million. He needs a couple percent in a couple of states, you know, because that's the other thing that we've talked about before. He lost the last election. She, you know, Harris doesn't have to do anything new or different. She just has to repeat what Joe Biden did. If everybody votes the same way they voted the last time, he loses the election, you know, and so I don't I don't really know how many of the Biden people leave her camp, especially now. Just yeah. my opinion. But but I don't that's me trying to talk with like sense. But the emotional me is fucking worried sick. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's like the academic. I thought it out in my mind me, but like the real me. You know, well, what we've got uh, here is prepared to become incredibly drunken so that I don't have to fucking listen to his shit that day. You know, I so don't I'm think not... I have a question in my mind that he isn't going to win. She isn't going to win the popular vote. That, I think, is a foregone yeah, conclusion fair, at this yeah. point. Yeah. But I don't understand. It's just the, the, the you know, it's the electoral college. It's the, uh, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it, yeah, I'm worried about it. Sure. Yeah. I, I think if he doesn't win, there's going to be rioting in the streets. And if he wins, there'll be rioting in the streets. I don't yeah. know. You know, I, no. I, you know, I just, here's what I don't understand. And I, and I, I say it before and I'll say it again. Uh, <laughs> we, we had Phil over here the other day. Phil Meyer came to New York. I haven't seen, seen Phil in... 30 years, maybe? I mean, person to person. He claims 1989. He claims 1989? Yeah, oh, okay. so it's 35 years, yeah. Yeah, and and I got to tell you, not, it, really, nice guy. You know, really, am I right, Alan? You know him Absolutely. as well as He's I do. He's really good. Where yeah. he gets his politics, I don't know, but... Well, the, well, that's the point. You know, I just don't understand. So I'm. I told Marjorie. You know, I mean, Marjorie knows his reputation, right? I'm determined when he comes over. I'm not even going to bring up politics. I don't even want to talk about it. Okay. So, <laughs> so he she, he comes over. Marjorie's out at the doctor's or something, and she finally comes and shows up. And then she sits down and she says hello to Phil and says hello to Phil's girlfriend, who's a very nice lady, by the way. 
uh, and uh, uh, Marjorie, the first thing she says, you still voting for Trump? And I went, oh, oh God. God. You know, I don't. Hope is the right on. Yeah. The I trouble she... is both of them are. Really? Well, she's she's a Republican also. She does her own podcast, daily podcast from the area where she lives in and uh on on republican politics oh yeah, yeah nice. really well i don't i don't mind her being a republican it's being for donald trump that's the problem yeah she's for trump you know yeah. i mean i can do you care if he grabs him by the pussy yeah <laughs> uh and and I, um, I i said to marjorie after it was all over because i had told her what you had said on this program about him injecting his penis God, that hurts. <laughs> and I said, and she said, well, I was going to ask him about that. And I said, I'm glad you didn't. Boy, he probably had the kit with him when he came to your house. Uh, probably, probably. Yeah. But no, she's a nice lady. She really is. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, R Republicans can be nice people. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't understand. See, I don't understand people I know who are intelligent, who are not stupid. And, and, and Phil isn't stupid. OK, who can possibly be for Trump? I can see how they could have been for him back in 2016. But since all the other things have gone down in between then and now, how you could possibly, any, as an intelligent person, even support Donald Trump? I can see how you don't want to support, you know, uh, Kamala. That I understand. So you don't vote for her, but you don't vote for him either. You just don't go to the polls, you know. I just don't understand. I don't understand what in in people I know who are intelligent, you know, whatever. So, Josh, you look like you kind of want to say something. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't understand how they can support, you know, the whole stuff with basically not wanting to you know, hand over power after the election. They'll just make excuses for it. Yeah. And they'll make excuses for him. And, I mean, I don't... They are more in love with a man than they are with a country, and I just can't... I can't accept it. It makes me sick. I mm -hmm. think they're small people, and the men that I see out there that do it, that love a man that way rather than, you know, their own country and their own democracy, they're they're sad people. I mean... You make excuses for this. If you have ideas about how to deal with the country, that's fine. But if that's the only person you can find mm -hmm. to to express them, uh, and then you worship them basically as a false god, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I can't accept that. Yeah, I mean, it just it just bothers me, you know that, like I said before, you know, I grew up in a in a home. It's surrounded by religion and, and things like this. Wait a minute. And hold, I watch hold, the TV. Hold on a second. Bree, would you mute yourself until, until you want to talk? Because there's a lot of noise in the background there where you are. You know, and I'm, I'm watching TV two days ago or whatever, and I see Trump walking around Georgia. But what bothers me about this is that, you know, the city of Asheville, North Carolina, and Boone, North Carolina have been ravaged and destroyed in the whole area by flooding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And who is Trump walking around on the tarmac with? And who is the organization that brought Trump to Georgia? Samaritan's Purse, which is run by Franklin Graham. And there is Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, walking around with Trump, worshiping his false god. And by the way, Franklin Graham is from Asheville, North Carolina. He is from oh. Boone, North Carolina. He has left his own cities where he was born and raised to go down to Georgia. And I know that they are maybe trying to help there. That's fine. But what I'm saying is he has gone away from where he is from to go down there and worship his false god, his false prophet. And I don't believe in, you know, that stuff. I, I didn't take to it the way my family would have preferred that I did. But I know a lot about Billy Graham, and I, I don't, I can't believe that his father would approve of him walking around down there with the most immoral person to ever hold the office, regardless of the fact of whether or not they think he's going well, to get you to save because, unborn babies. I'll explain, I mean, it's, I'll, I'll, it's explain, I'll explain it to you, Josh. Franklin Graham is a whore. 
He is. Okay. I mean, he has turned yeah. himself into a, a, a skeleton of a Christian. If you believe in that, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know what operates in his mind that makes him think that their their Lord, their God, would approve. That's what I'm saying. I, I've just had these differences with these people that I just don't. You know, Franklin wants to go help people. That's fine. I, I, I would even give him money. I've given well, him Well, actually, he money. came to New but York. He came to know. New York during COVID and set up a right. tent out mm. across the street from Mount <laughs> Sinai to open up a secondary hospital. But nobody asked him to do it. Yeah. You know, and finally he left after a while because nobody wanted to use his goddamn hospital. Yeah, you know? yeah it just... I, I, that's what I'm saying. I do not understand these folks that I know and they have to know in their mind are going against their own principles and everything that they believe their entire life because they've been tricked by a false god. I may be wrong I about not, this. You know, I, I don't get be, it. I may be wrong about this, but when he opened up that hospital across the street from uh, over in the park from... Uh, um, uh, who do you call it, uh, um, from Mount Sinai. Uh, I believe if you went to his hospital, you had to sign something saying you believe in Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I look, seem to remember that. I mean, a lot of their charity comes with, you know. A proviso. Uh, you know, a message, you know, as they would call it, you know, mm -hmm. which in itself is fine. You know, I mean, they will not refuse anyone. I mean, his organization has at times done some good work across the world, you know. But I, I just, why does he want to align himself with that? I repeat, he's a whore. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, these are the same people that I've had to sit for decades and listen to in, at dinner tables and churches who think that the Clintons were put here on the earth by the devil, you know, to face mm -hmm. off with the world on behalf of the devil. And I just don't, and now I look at, at Trump and the things that he's done, and I don't see how, if they were saying the same things about him as they were then, I could respect them, you know, yeah. because they would have a consistent worldview and a consistent belief system. Mm -hmm. But they were willing to give all of it up to get something that they wanted. And I, I miss the part in Scripture where that is acceptable. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I never came across it. Maybe it's there, and I missed it. Oh, and they, they they left that out at at the university that I attended. You know, I mean, I was sick that day or something. You know, I don't well, know. Maybe it's in the Bibles that Trump is selling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I just can't believe that they would. Yeah. You know, and I don't, and I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I can't believe that his father, who handed him that organization. Okay, well, listen, I, uh, it's time now to do a little uh, pause in our program for a little levity for a little segment we like to call, What the Hell is Brie Eating? <laughs> it's apparently something he has to chew a lot because octopus. he is chewing. Octopus. Huh? <laughs> Octopus. What is what it what is it, Bree? Is it Malaysian mouse? What? <laughs> yeah, it looked like a mouse. It's gray, it did look like a mouse, huh? Yeah. We're <laughs> having fish and chips today. Fish, fish and, and chips. chips. Yeah. Where fish are you? Fish. You're not in England. I... No, I. I... This uh, restaurant used to have open air, but now they put windows, and there's nothing to absorb the sound. So it's very loud in here. People play their iPads and their phones, and they don't have headsets like me. And there's no carpet, so it's very, it's just very loud. So I have to apologize. For that. Yeah. Well, it's, it, yeah, but it's it's good. It's good. Uh, getting back to to Franklin Graham, I mean, and that kind of thing. Yeah, I can't see uh, a, any religious people being for him. Uh, but well, yeah, I don't understand it. But they overwhelmingly are. Uh, ha hasn't haven't so, the Baptists come out for him? Oh, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, as far as I understand, yeah. I mean, they've they've 
kicked some people out of their organization and excommunicated them over saying what I just said, which was we need to get on with the business of, again, if you don't believe this stuff, I'm just, you know, giving you their link. You know, we need to get on with the business of saving souls and not supporting false prophets yeah. and false gods. And it's like, oh, nope, you don't fit in here anymore, you know, which is never supposed to be the thing in the church. And you're out. You know, I mean, they've they've replaced leadership who said things that of that nature. I mean, it, it's it's very sad, you know, in a lot of ways, if you know, because I know a lot of those people, but it's also very troubling. You know, I mean, yeah. this is the danger of combining a fanatical political movement with a religious uh, or, you know, a power organization, you know, I mean, historically, this is what they try to do is combine their efforts and mobilize, you, you know, well, I mean, I mean uh, so, when, when's the last time Donald Trump went to church? OK, no, now, I don't yeah, mind no. him. I don't mind him using a guy like Franklin Graham. If, if Franklin Graham admits that, you know, hey, this is not the most morally wonderful guy in the world, you know, but he doesn't he doesn't put him down for that. No, they they they, they worship him. I don't how understand he, how the military backed. How can anybody in the military vote for him? He called the our heroes in Arlington Cemetery uh, losers. <laughs> yeah, that always got me too. <clears throat> but he is the yeah. commander in chief, so they have to honor him. Well, but he wasn't. He's not. I, the I think there's a lot of dissent in there. Oh, I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of dissent in there. I can't see how, if you're in the military right yeah. now, you. You can find him a good idea. Exactly. You know. Exactly. What he's 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 going to support you? I don't think so. He doesn't care about you. He nope. he doesn't. You know what he doesn't care about? Here here's what he doesn't care about. Anybody who's put in, himself. Anybody who's <laughs> involved in service. Right. You know, who gives of themselves to accomplish something for others. He, he doesn't know about that. He has no concept of that. It was never in his DNA. He certainly, you know, all he knows is what he learned from Roy Cohn, and that's exactly what he's doing now. You know, the one other, this is interesting, there's a documentary on, uh, on uh, what's his name, the head of the uh, WWF, uh, WW, now the WWE. Oh, McMahon? McMahon, Vince McMahon. And there's a documentary on him. Um, and it's uh, uh, all about him and the, the WWE or WWF or whatever you want to call it at various times. And the fact that he used Trump in the WWF. And somebody uh, was, sa was saying that Trump learned everything he knows about politicking from being in the WWF that all he's doing is acting exactly like a wrestler does. You know? She's stupid. She's dumb. I don't like her. She's a, she's a moron. You know, that kind of stuff is all pure WWF. It's all wrestling. Yep. And he, he learned it from wrestling. It's a show. Yeah. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry. You know, I don't consider the presidency an entertainment. Uh, no, you know, most of us don't. Uh, no, most of us don't. We'd <laughs> like, we'd like. I, I wish it were, because then it would be a happy time for everybody. But it's not. <laughs> you know, we lose Bree. Where'd he go? Hmm. Yeah. Apparently, lunch was didn't agree with him. I don't know, but you know. So you know we're we're coming up. We got we've got about what thirty three days till the election. I think it was thirty three as of uh, midnight tonight. I think something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Go to training next week. Not long ago. Will you go to training next week? Yeah, they got to go. They got to train us, even though we've been doing this for the last fifteen years, and yeah. they still got to train you every it, year. He's one of the good guys. He goes down and demands a polling station. Yeah. Uh, is polling lighter now that we have mail in and things like that, or is it? It's still. Yeah, <clears throat> it is. It's gotten lighter over the years, but people still 
like myself, like to go in and push the buttons and all that stuff. I like to go through the act of it. Well, some Free people food, do. Right? Some, some people do want to go in and do the traditional way of voting. You know, they yeah, feel. They Whether feel, it's electronic or whatever, I still I don't go in there and ask for paper and I want a pencil and or a black marker so it comes out on both sides and that sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we get to use a, a pen here, I guess, at home with the, uh, you know, with the mail-in ballot. Yeah. But the only problem is, you know, I can either I can either go to my polling place, which is a half a block that way. Or I can mail in my ballot by going up to the post office, which is a half a block that way. <laughs> but, you, but but at the polling place, you know it'll get in, and in, in the mail, you don't know if it'll get there. That's you would be surprised at how many people argue with me on that one, saying, where are you taking it? The whole bit. Yeah. Where does it go? How does it get picked up? Where, how do I know it's getting there? Oh, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. Well, you probably know about that online Tom. And see if you're mo about you know after about a week yeah. you look online and then show yes you're oh i get a text when mine out. goes through do you think, do you think we'll ever out. get to the time I, it's got to happen eventually where we can vote by by uh internet yeah it's gonna be a while yeah I mean, I mean, well, it's secure. well they've got to have all the security yeah. protocols in place before just, they do something like that and trump's got to be dead <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and there's still millions of people that don't have computers or iPhones, so they wouldn't right. be able to vote. Yeah. 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 Um, we have the strangest. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, Tom. Wait, 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 Jeff? We have the strangest organization in Connecticut that at presently you're not allowed to put anything up on a wall advertising. Yeah. What any advertising? I mean, political advertising. Yeah, personal, personal stuff. I want to say I want Trump, whatever, and I stick it on. It's you know, not on, allowed. Under my door, not allowed to do that until I think it's uh, ten days from now. And then you can, can do it. Start doing that. No, that makes sense to me personally. No. You know, no, it certainly doesn't. No, no time to argue. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, eh, I got the theme playing here, if you can hear it. Uh, hey, listen, uh, you know, nice, nice, uh, nice little Wednesday night. Uh, hopefully, I don't. I'm not going to do PT tomorrow, so I'll be a little more lucid. Um, but I, uh, you know, it, I, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if it's working. I can't tell whether it's working or not. But I, I hope it does. I hope it does. Hey, listen, uh, thank you a lot uh, for being with us, uh, Alan, as always. Uh, and um, uh, uh, Charlie, thanks to you as well. The two of you can now go over and, and deal with, uh, with uh, Amy Manuel. Uh, she will be able to go on tonight because the... Uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, our place where we run the audio is working. So, and anyway, thank you, uh, Josh. Hopefully, we'll see you again tomorrow night, right? Tom, yeah. always a good day when you're here. Jeff Stein, always love seeing you. We got to reschedule for lunch. Uh, uh, Kevin, thank you. Okay, and thank you for your service as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, thanks uh, for calling us tonight, uh, Bree. We really appreciate it. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And we will <laughs> go like that, okay? There we go. And I am saying goodbye to them. Listen, uh, we got Amy next. She's here with the intersection. And uh, then uh, right after that, uh, we have a whole bunch of programming. We'll replay all our programs, and then we'll be back again to with you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night.